Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Whenever you buy a new telescope, there's a warning label that tells you not to look at the sun. In fact, if you try to look at the sun with your computerized mount, it gives you another warning telling you not to look at the sun. Well, I'm tired of being told what to do. Dangerous? <laughs> like COVID's dangerous? Fake news. I believe in freedom. I believe that if I want to look at the sun without a mask on, I can do whatever the hell I want. But seriously, you could damage your eyes looking at the sun. That's why you should never do visual astronomy. You should always do astrophotography. It's just safer. In this video, I'll be showing you some tips on how to take your solar astro processing to the next level. A little bit on acquisition, but mostly on processing. I got these secrets from Simon Tang, a renowned solar astrophotographer. His work is really on that next level. And I asked him to share his secrets with me. Oh, hey Dylan, what's up? He was unwilling to share his secrets. J just watch the video that I put up. He wanted to keep them close to his chest. J just, just, just watch the video. Secrets that only get passed down through the generations. Arcane, esoteric knowledge of solar astrophotography. Dude, I, sh I showed you before, man. What his real tricks are, we may never know. <sighs> I've taken the things that he taught me when he looked at what I was doing and some advice he's given me and it really has improved my images like a thousand percent. So I'm gonna share them with you. If you follow all the steps in this video correctly, you may be taking the best solar astro photo you ever have in your entire life. The best photo of the sun you've ever seen come out of your telescope. It won't repair the long disappointment that your parents have in you, but you'll have a good photo of the sun. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Bintel. Bintel are an Australian vendor of astronomy equipment. Bintel have been supporting this channel for ages and they've got a really excellent website with a huge range of stuff. So if you are an Australian astronomer and you wanna buy the Lunt 40 millimeter or anything else featured in this video, links down in the description below and tell them I sent you because I think they're finding that really, really annoying at this point, which is great. So QHY sent me this 533, uh, which initially I was gonna use for deep space stuff. But on a whim, just because I didn't have a different camera to use, I've set this up here with the QHY533, the filter wheel, which is really just a glorified spacer, there's no filters in it, the Powermate 2.5 magnifier, and then it just goes straight into the Lunt 40mm tiny little telescope. This is all set up on the CGX mount. And I gotta say, it's a dream combination. The sampling, the way it fits on the sensor, is just absolutely perfect. Look at this framing. It's exactly how it is on the sensor. Square sensor of the QHY 533. And it's just perfect. Solar astrophotography might be the easiest kind of astrophotography there is. I cannot stress how easy it is. You point, you focus, you take a video, you stack it, you get an amazing image. It's really, really impressive. So taking a photo of the sun is easy, but there are some tips I can share with you to get to the next level. First tip is whatever software you're using to take a photo of the sun, whether that's SharpCap or Fire Capture, make sure it's set to 16-bit. This will give you the dynamic range that we'll need for pulling out later in post-processing. The next tip is focus. It's really hard to focus on the sun, usually because you're outside with a computer screen in the bright sun. So really zoom in on a feature, like a surface feature, a sunspot, the edge even, and hold that close to you while you're adjusting the focus knob of your telescope. This will allow you to nail that focus and you really wanna get that down right, because if it's not, the images will be okay, you can sharpen them up later, but they won't be that next level that we're trying to get to. If you're using a proper hydrogen alpha solar telescope, it usually has a tuning knob. 
Now the tuning knob will help you get the detail in the surface and around the edges. There is a sweet spot that you want to get it to. You want to expose correctly on the surface first and then gently adjust that tuner and hopefully you'll get that surface detail not looking too washed out not looking too dark, but in that sweet spot in the middle. Unlike deep sky astrophotography, where we're trying to chase really long exposures, here we want the lowest possible exposure. We want the camera to be reading out as fast as possible. So get the millisecond exposure time as low as you can. Then pull the gain slider up until you see the histogram. It's like a nice little hill. You don't want it clipping on the edge. You just want it all to fit in. Lower the exposure first, then pull the gain up. Simple. Once the image is in frame and you are ready to go, start capturing, uh, you want to keep those solar exposures from 30 seconds to 60 seconds max. If you're zoomed in to a particular feature, you want to bring that down, so closer to the 30 second mark. If you've got a full disk image, you're fine with taking a full minute exposure. Beyond that, the sun is such a dynamic surface, things are changing so quickly that things will start to get soft and things will start to smear. But the secret sauce for all of this is processing. So let's do some of that. I'll be processing all of these images on the Space PC, the all white Space PC build video here if you're interested in how I built this thing. Uh, it's a Windows computer, it has a great GPU. I'll be using these three pieces of software, some of which are free and some of which are paid, uh, but they are the best tools for the job. If you want to follow along, download these things. Right, let's process some data. The first step here is, uh, you can see all my files here, I've got SER files. These are the files that came down from the camera to the PC. Um, I've transferred them on an external drive and we're just going to open up AutoStackit here. If you haven't downloaded AutoStackit, it is the best stacking software for planetary and solar and lunar, it's fantastic. Uh, so let's see what we've got here. I'm just gonna drag it, the file over to the open and it gives me a preview here. It's a bit zoomed in, so let's zoom out and we can actually scrub through. So if I hold that frame bar up there, we can scrub through the frames. I can see it's fairly well aligned, it's fairly stable. And this one has the biggest file size, so I think this one's gonna have the best data. So the first thing we're going to do in auto stack it once we've loaded our um, once we've loaded our video and it's the one we want we're going to control click on one of these surface features something that is easy to track from image to image i'm going to choose this little sunspot here uh, now i've got image stabilization here set to surface uh, you can check my settings here if it helps um, but for now we're just going to hit the analyze button and this will go through and check the quality of each of the frames in the video. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to place some alignment points. So if I just hit this place AP grid, it fills it up with all this cool looking sciencey stuff, which is great. We could stop here, post this to Instagram, look like a huge nerd. I love it. They don't look like too much or too little to me. If we made them too small by selecting say 24 here and then placing alignment points, way too many uh, that'll probably take a while uh, i'll go back to 200 the sun is a nice bright object that's maybe too few um, let's go back to 104 yep that's looking fine to me at this point you choose the percentage of frames that you want to stack i like 15 here um, you can go more than that and you can try and do this again and again I'm going to choose 15, which will just take the best 15% of the frames in that video, the ones with the sharpest quality that it can detect, and it will average those in the stack, and then we'll have a result. Uh, now I have tick sharpened here, which will output a sharpened version of the image as well. You don't have to do this because we're not going to use that sharpened image. I just like it as a preview. So I'd sharpen blend raw for 50%, uh, 1.5 times drizzle. Uh, that's just my preference. You can turn drizzle off if you prefer and then scale up later yourself. Um, but let's give that a go. I'm going to stack. And after this finishes stacking, it should leave us with a new folder in here with the 15 prefix or suffix a ASP15. That's going to have our stack in there. So we'll open that up. That's the unsharpened stack looking pretty good and this is the sharpen stack um, it's a very basic deconvolution but it it looks pretty good and for a long time I just used this as my final image uh, but we're gonna go deeper 
The secret source for solar images is this IMPPG program. Uh, let's see, it's by Philip Zezerick. I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly, but it is fantastic software and it's free. Uh, I wish he had a donate link because I would donate at least 69 cents for this. It's fantastic. What we're going to do here is we're going to go file open and we're going to select that stack, but not the sharpened one. So the TIFF file that came out of auto stack it. And let's see what we got here. The great thing about this program is that it's actually using GPU acceleration. If we go into processing backend here, you, got, you see you have the selection between CPU and GPU. So the reason this runs so fast is because of the GPU acceleration. Now I'm going to drag a box around here and what it does, it has two main tools here that I use, which is the deconvolution and the tone curve. Uh, both are fantastic and let's have a play with them to see how they work. Uh, first of all, I'm going to hit this select all, which will just select the whole image and I'm going to make it fit into frame. Now we've got this tone curve tool here. This is a really interesting tool. If I just pull the middle of it down, you can see we get lots of contrast there, which is quite nice. Pull it up and it just gets super bright and we can actually see stuff on the outside of the edges. So what I've found really cool is to just put a point here at the end where we have a lot of data, as you can see with that spike, and just play with this point here. And you can see how it pulls out the background and we can adjust this so we get more detail in the flares or more detail in the sky, more signal in the sky, I should say. And it's just a process of going through and adjusting this as you like. Uh, what I like to do is find points in the tone curve and then pinch them up or down. So you can see that this, this part of the curve is affecting that bottom corner, those bright areas. I'll pinch this area here. That's just, that looks ridiculous. It, if you pull it too far, it goes inverted. Uh, I'm going to pull that back to here. So really it's just a process of adjusting this tone curve at different points along the curve to get the detail that you like. Yeah, pull that right down. Another cool trick uh, you can try is just hitting this invert button. And it just looks insanely good. I love inverted images. Uh, in fact, let's go inverted. So I'm going to reset this tone curve now. Invert. And let's try working the image this way. So I'm going to go get lots of contrast there. I'm going to pull the sky down. At this point, I'll just fast forward because I'm just fiddling with the tone curve, but let's see where it ends up. Okay, I really like how this is looking now. So I'm going to move on to deconvolution. It's already applying a 1.3 Sigma for Lucy Richardson deconv. And I'm just going to pull that up. Let's see if we can get it quite a bit sharper. Oh, that is looking spectacular. I hope this is coming through okay on the YouTube video. Uh, but if we zoom in here, look at the fringing here and these sunspots. It just looks insane. Okay, I'm really liking this. Uh, to give you an idea of the preview of what it looked like before, we can just drag and you can see that the surface looks completely different. These inside details here are just looking absolutely stunning. It's a completely different picture, right? We've got all of this data pulled out very carefully because of the time tool and then that last sharpening with the deconvolution just makes it look tight. So I'm going to save that. Now let's move on to the final step, which is Photoshop. Okay, I've got my solar image opened in Photoshop and the first thing I'm going to do is change the mode to color and I'm going to crop away the rough edges here from the stack. Good. And now I'm going to add the false colorization. So layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. I'm going to tell it to colorize, so clicking the colorize. And I like to put it somewhere on the red side of orange, which I think looks good. And boost that saturation to give it some real oomph. And that's looking pretty good. Now, what I tend to do here is add another levels layer. So new adjustment layer levels. And just give it a little bit more contrast by pulling in the sliders. 
and pull those bright areas right out so they really shine without losing too much detail. I can see that the inner areas of the sunspots here aren't completely bleeding out so that looks pretty good. Now we're almost done but I'm going to show you one more trick. Magnifying tool so I can select a bunch of the sky area. I'm going to, its tolerance is set to 32, it's got a fair amount but we're going to expand that so I'll go select modify expand by say maybe 25, yep. And now I'm going to feather that so select modify feather which gives it a nice smooth gradient uh, along that 25. Now I'm going to go layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation again and I'm going to give a different colorization to the sky. So I'll hit colorize and let's go over to the blues because I want I want a blue sky but a little dark maybe a little darker than that. Yeah that's looking pretty good. We don't want it too saturated so I'll pull the saturation back so it looks a bit more natural. That is looking cool. I can see a little bit of orange bleeding in here so I'm just going to get my brush tool and just brush that orange away. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now before I save this off, I'm going to do a final topaz denoise because we see a little bit of grain there. Uh, so topaz denoise will clean that up and just give a final sharpen. Uh, I'll, before I sharpen, I always change my image size to whatever I need. This is pretty good, it's almost 2000 pixels. So I'm going to save this. And because the next step is destructive on the data, I'm going to copy that background layer. And I'm going to go to Filter, Topaz Denoise. I'm going to go Auto, but I see it's way too sharpened. I mean, that looks wild, it looks pretty cool. But that's a little bit over the top. So I'm going to pull that sharpening way, way back. And let's just make sure that the sky is looking smoother there. It's a little too smooth for my liking, so I'm going to reduce this. Topaz is a very um, aggressive plugin, so I find the, the really low settings are probably all you need. So I'll just edge that noise removal up until the sky is okay. Apply. Job done. Full screen. If this video has helped you to take any good solar images, tag me. Subscribe to this channel if you want. I'll try and do more of these tutorials, workflows, and really just hands-on demonstrations of how it all works. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. Remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die. <laughs>